This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Good morning, I'm Lauren Casey. The time right now is 427 here. It's Thursday morning. Thanks for starting your day with us. I want to get to a few top stories before we get into our show today, starting with something that's on the on everyone's minds right now. It's kids going back to school right now and the safety plans that are in place. We know several districts have returned to class and some districts have had to deal with a case or two already of COVID-19. So we're talking to state leaders about what they're doing to make sure schools reopen safely. And we're also talking about how they're going to track these cases? Are they going to do it district by district? Is there going to be some sort of dashboard? So here's a look at some schools that have already reported cases so far at the start of the school year by either a staff member or a student. And we'll be keeping you updated on what we're learning from state leaders and the legalities of releasing that information. Let's take a look right now at the latest COVID numbers here in the state of Indiana. As of yesterday, we logged 740 new cases of COVID-19, bringing our total number of positive cases since March to more than 69,000. We also tracked 12 new deaths in our state, bringing the death toll past 2,800. The positivity rate as of today is at 8.8%. We'll break down these numbers a little bit more and take a look at the hospitalization rate right now, and we'll get that coming up for you on Good Morning Indiana. Let's take a turn right now, though, to our forecast. Alyssa, yesterday was a beautiful day, almost fall-like yeah. out there, and I kind of enjoyed it. Yeah, you know, it was a great day. I hope you were able to get outside, and if you weren't, that's okay, because we're going to have pretty much a repeat. Temperatures starting again in the 50s, this morning, so a bit of a cooler start today. Humidity is still low, so you'll notice that when you step outside. As we head into the afternoon, temperatures are going to climb a little bit warmer today into the upper 70s, and we are going to see mostly sunny skies, so a little bit less cloud coverage today, which is going to help warm us up even more in the forecast. It's staying dry and quiet today, but as we head towards the weekend, tomorrow into Saturday and Sunday, we are going to build that humidity back into the forecast, so just be aware of that. I'll break down those details in just a few minutes. Alyssa, thank you. Something else we'll be talking about today is do you remember these boards outside of businesses on places like Mass Ave in downtown Indianapolis? After we had the protests and then riots here across their city, a lot of businesses had to board up their windows either out of safety precautions or because they were broken and damaged in those protests. So now we'll talk to you about how a local museum is working to keep these boards and these artwork pieces that were done across the city to preserve history in a moment in time here in Indianapolis. Kelsey Anderson will have that story for us. We'll have your news, weather, and your traffic updates, of course, coming up right here on Good Morning Indiana. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. The state's top health officials say that schools can reopen safely despite the growing cases in some local districts. The latest central Indiana schools impacted by the virus and how they're responding. A Fisher's couple is fighting to get their son with special needs back in school. Why their attorney says this issue is a violation of federal law. And schools in Muncie are set to return next week, both in person and remotely. The extra support they're giving to hundreds of students who opted to begin the school year online. But before we get to our top stories today, we want to thank you for joining our team here on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. Alyssa Donovan is joining me again with another cool start here across central Indiana. Alyssa. That's right. And the good news is it is going to be another very pleasant day in terms of temperatures and sunshine and low humidity. But we are starting a little cool this morning. Temperatures right around 60 degrees in Indianapolis, a little cooler to the north. And we could cool down a couple degrees yet this morning. So you might want to grab that light jacket as you head out the door. As we start Start the day. We're going to see mostly sunny skies, a little bit of cloud coverage to the south of us just from a disturbance that passed through overnight. Not expecting any precipitation in the next 24 hours or so. What's going on right now is we have this high pressure that's in control today. That's going to continue to push into the area, keeping us dry and calm and quiet. Still under that northwest flow, so that's why we are seeing those temperatures a little cooler today in the 50s and low 60s to start. Looking at the noon hour, we'll continue to see that sunshine. Maybe Maybe a few clouds this afternoon, but we are going to warm a little bit more today, close to 80 degrees. 
Alyssa, thank you. Let's take a look at traffic as you're heading out on the roads this Thursday. This is a live look at I-465 near Pendleton Pike up on the northeast side. Traffic is traveling up to speed both northbound and southbound in this area. No major issues to slow down your commutes. Let's take you south of there. This is I-465, a camera a little west of Emerson Avenue near the Beach Grove area. You can see there traffic is pretty quiet this morning. Right now I'm not monitoring any major crashes or delays around central Indiana, but of course we'll keep our eyes on your roads throughout the morning and let you know if there are any issues. It is 432 and new from overnight. A person is in critical condition after being hit while walking on South Harding Street. This happened near West Hannah Avenue, the intersection around 1130. Right now, the details surrounding this incident are unclear. We're working to learn more information as to what happened as police continue to investigate. I continue to believe that our schools can safely reopen by wearing masks, practicing social distancing and good hand washing. State Health Commissioner Dr. Christina Box is continuing to support the reopening of schools in Indiana. Her message comes as 10 local school districts have reported at least one case of COVID-19. Here is a list of the districts impacted. Cohen Community Schools and Crawfordsville Community School Corporation are the latest to report cases. Cohen Superintendent says that a member of the Transportation Department tested positive and because they were in close contact with bus drivers, there's not enough people to run the bus routes. They have now delayed the start of school until Monday. Crawfordsville also had a member test positive. Five others are being quarantined at this time. The district says it will continue its plans to be in classes on Monday. And Dr. Box and the governor say they are considering creating a dashboard as a way to track the cases in local schools. They're currently currently looking into the legality of releasing that information. Well, it is 433 and a Fisher's couple has filed a formal complaint against Hamilton Southeastern Schools to get their son back in school. The D-Egg family claims that the school district is failing to provide crucial services to their son Dylan and other students with special needs. Dylan gets occupational, physical and speech therapy at school as well as academic instruction. But that all came to a stop in March when HSC and other schools closed for the COVID-19 pandemic. D-Eggs had hoped that Dylan would return this month, but Hamilton Southeastern is starting its year with virtual instruction only. The Diegs filed a formal complaint with the Indiana Department of Education this week saying the district is failing to provide services for their son, which they say is a violation of federal law. We rely on the public school system to assist with Dylan so that Dylan can have the best possible opportunities. It's important to us that he has equal opportunity. And the reality is, is that Dylan needs the extra servicing that we cannot provide him here because we're not physical therapists, we're not occupational or speech therapists. I'm not a special education instructor. I don't have the skill sets to help him thrive. Their attorney, Tom Blessing, says that the district is violating the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. We reached out to HSC for a response to this complaint. A district spokeswoman says they're still reviewing it. You can read HSC's reopening plan in this story on the RTV6 app and also on our website, theindychannel.com. At 434, Muncie Community Schools are less than a week away from starting their school year. They're having in-person classes, but nearly 800 students have enrolled in the district's virtual learning program. To make sure they have reliable technology for them to learn, the district is handing out devices and hotspots for those kids. Kindergarten through second graders will get iPads, while students 3 through 12 will get Chromebooks. We are committed to make sure every family and every student has the resources they need this school year. I think it's amazing that the school's willing to, you know, support parents in whatever decisions they make and provide them with all the tools they need for our children to be able to succeed at home. Pickup for those devices continues today and tomorrow. You can find the specific times and guidelines on the district's website. Students attending in person will also get devices on the first day of school next Tuesday. Sending Hoosier students safely back to school is the goal of parents and districts across the state. RTV6 is taking a closer look at your options as you decide what is best to keep your child learning during this pandemic. Join us for an RTV6 special safely back to school tonight at 730. So Indiana is now reporting nearly 70,000 COVID-19 cases since the pandemic began. Here's a look at the latest numbers. The State Department of Health confirms 740 new cases, bringing the total to 69,975. 12 new deaths were also reported, with the state's death toll now surpassing 2,800. More than 792,000 Hoosiers have been tested for the virus so far, and the total positivity rate right now remains at 8.8%.
And a grim new milestone in the coronavirus pandemic. There are now more than 700,000 people dead across the globe from COVID-19. Here in the U.S., more than 157,000 lives lost as the states in South and the West continue to see a rise in deaths. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. Florida, one of the nation's hotspots, has now topped half a million confirmed cases. Texas also battling high numbers. One nursing home in Houston reporting 19 deaths and 24 infected employees. At this Texas ICU, doctors and nurses flipping patients onto their stomachs to help them breathe. Today I saw so far about you know, 25 patients on the ventilator. Though death rates nationwide are declining, deaths from the virus are rising in 32 states. Hospitalizations also going up in 28 states. With the country making up nearly a quarter of all COVID-19 cases and deaths across the globe, Dr. Anthony Fauci says the outbreak here in the U.S. is the worst in the world and testing must be improved. It's unacceptable, period. And I don't know why because that's not what I do every day. But he I also called you. out the politics surrounding the virus, saying his family has gotten death threats. There's such a divergence of how people view this and such a divisiveness. This as President Trump continues pushing for in-person learning at American schools, claiming the virus is on its way out. It's going away now. It'll go away like things go away. Absolutely. It's uh, no question in my mind. It will go away. Tens of thousands of kids are back in classrooms, some already testing positive, including a second grader in Canton, Georgia. All 20 students and the teacher now in quarantine. President Trump also posted on Facebook and Twitter saying that children are, quote, almost immune, but his posts were removed on both platforms. Facebook saying his claims were false and harmful. The president's team claims that he actually meant kids are less susceptible to contracting the virus. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Indiana University Health is proposing a $1.6 billion expansion project to consolidate its downtown Indianapolis campuses and create a new 576-bed hospital. This is a look at the artist renderings of what the new hospital would look like. The proposal is to combine operations at IU Health Methodist and University Hospitals and open the new facility in 2026. The Methodist Hospital Complex would undergo renovations and be integrated into the larger campus. IU Health officials say that the coronavirus pandemic influence the design of the hospital so it will have adaptable space and sufficient intensive care units to handle surges of patients. If you need a little help feeding your family during this difficult time, resources are available. This morning, Gleaners Food Bank will host a mobile pantry at the Anthem headquarters on Virginia Avenue in downtown Indianapolis. Fresh fruits, vegetables, meat, and dairy items will be distributed from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Experts are concerned with the upcoming flu season and if it will continue to over, overwhelm the health care system. Coming up, their recommendations about the flu shot and why they say the cases could hopefully be lower this season. And Colts camp is underway with a whole different look these days. We're checking in with the team for the first time and hearing from Philip Rivers in a Colts jersey. We'll be right back. Alyssa. And we are going to see a very similar setup to what we saw yesterday. If you enjoyed the weather yesterday, you're going to like today. Just a little bit warmer, and we're going to continue that warming trend as we head into the weekend. You're watching Good Morning Indiana. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The time right now is 443. Here's a live look at traffic at I-70 and Lyndhurst Drive over on the west side. You can see traffic is moving along up to speed, both eastbound and westbound. No crashes, no delays here to slow you down. Some new concerns now about how the flu season will change with the coronavirus. Health experts say that everyone should get the flu vaccine regardless of whether there's a pandemic or not. Right now, more than ever, it's important for people who to not cause a strain on the healthcare system, and the flu could do that. It'll bring a lot more people to the hospital. And, you know, we always have a lot of admissions and a lot of people that are sick with flu. Um, we don't have hospital capacities in some places to have an additional um, surge of patients because of influenza. Doctors typically recommend getting the flu shot in October. Health experts are also helping with more people wearing masks and social distancing that the flu cases will be lower this season.
Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden will officially accept his party's nomination in his home state of Delaware. The original plan was for him to accept the bid at the DNC in Milwaukee this month. That convention is now going to be fully virtual because of the pandemic, and the committee confirmed Biden and other speakers will not travel to Wisconsin. At a fundraiser on Wednesday, Biden called it the right decision to not travel to Milwaukee for that convention. Southwest Airlines is cutting back on coronavirus cleaning procedures. The airline rolled out the enhanced cleaning program back in March, and now they're scaling it back, meaning some changes like no longer sanitizing seatbelts between flights. Southwest says cleanings will now focus on a few items like tray tables and bathrooms. According to a memo sent to flight attendants, the move will reduce the time the planes spend on the ground between flights. Deep overnight cleanings will continue. Starting next week, Walmart will transform some of its parking lots into drive-in movie theaters. The retailer says 160 stores will hold the events. They'll play movies like Black Panther, E.T., and Back to the Future. Some events will also include appearances from celebrities like Drew Barrymore and LeBron James. The Central Indiana Walmarts include Muncie and Richmond. They'll host showings in October. You can find a full schedule on walmartdrivein.com. And it is 4.45, and it's a chilly start to our Thursday, Alyssa. I'm kind of liking it. It's kind of a fall-like feel. Yeah, you know, it's been really nice the past couple days here. We're going to continue to see very similar conditions today to what we saw yesterday. The only real big change is we are going to see a little bit more sunshine today than what we saw yesterday. As we head through the next couple days, we're going to continue to see this comfortable weather, low humidity, and plenty of sunshine. Storm potential does build in as we head into the weekend, and that humidity is going to increase Saturday and Sunday. And then as we start next week, it is going to be a start with some unsettled weather potential for showers and storms every day in the seven day forecast after we get through Saturday. So the next couple days will be dry and then those changes come in right now. 60 degrees in Indianapolis, 52 in Kokomo, Bloomington at 58. So a few cool spots on our map, especially those areas to the north where we have that northeasterly wind helping dr uh, drive in that cooler air. Most of us are starting with those clear skies this morning. We have just a little bit of cloud coverage to the south of us, and that's just from a disturbance that's moving through uh, to the south of Indiana this morning. But most of us are starting with that sunshine. Anyone starting with that cloud coverage will just continue to see partly cloudy skies for southeast counties for much of the day today. But most of us starting with that sunshine, and then we will cloud up a little bit this afternoon. It's going to be similar to what we saw yesterday, where we just see those nice, light, fluffy cumulus clouds across the area. Not really going to impede that sunshine too much and because we are going to see a little bit less cloud coverage that means we are going to warm up a little bit more which is why those temperatures will climb close to 80 degrees likely some areas to the south will hit that 80 degree mark as we hit that daytime heating so mostly sunny skies 79 right here around indianapolis low humidity those winds a little bit breezier out of the northeast 5 to 10 miles per hour yesterday was a very calm day and then behind that some warmer air is going to filter in from the south more moisture as well. So that's going to happen as we head into Saturday and Sunday. As it does, we're going to start to warm back up closer to average and then past average. We're going to be a little bit warmer by Sunday. Tomorrow, 82, 85 on Saturday by Saturday afternoon and evening. That's when we have that moisture back in the forecast. Potential for showers and storms. Our better chance for showers and storms comes in on Sunday and it's going to stick with us for a lot of the rest of the forecast. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, dry, mostly sunny skies, a little bit more humid on Saturday, and then shower chances Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. All right, Alyssa, thanks. Let's take a look at traffic right now on the roads. This is down on the south side, I-465, a view near Madison Avenue, where traffic's moving along just fine, both eastbound and westbound. We'll continue to monitor your roads and keep you updated down here. But let's take a turn up to the north side, I-465, a look near Keystone Avenue, where traffic is traveling smoothly at this early hour. No issues to slow you down. Well, the Colts are set to start the season on September 13th on the road against Jacksonville. Training camp is already underway and there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding what's ahead due to the pandemic. But the Colts are also facing some unknowns at quarterback. Sports Director Dave First takes a look. They're all here. Players, coaches, equipment guys fitted and fine, but not going full bore. It's still phase one with strength and conditioning the focus so far. In some ways, our workouts have been better than ever because we're splitting them up into smaller groups to kind of keep the social distancing. And so really a lot of uh, good attention there. 
And that includes new Colt quarterback Philip Rivers sliding on his number 17 jersey for the first time last week. Although being reunited with his former assistant coach in San Diego was a little odd in the weight room the other day. And I walked by and he, and he said, hey, coach. And I just kind of glanced over and waved because I was someone was walking with me and I was talking to them. And, and because Philip had a mask on, I didn't even recognize it was him. I'm telling you, it's a little bit of a challenge in these masks and things that we're wearing. Then again, nothing's normal these days. Wearing a mask while throwing to receivers, also wearing masks, let alone what things will look like on game days, playing in stadiums with either no or mandated smaller capacity crowds. It will be different, and I think it'll be different for all of us. Um, I think really you, you, hear, you hear teams and you hear players talk about all the time, we don't care where we'll play, we'll play in the parking lot, we'll play in the backyard. You're gonna find out how true that is this year. It's only the second week, progress and protocol in the minds of everyone, with the opener currently scheduled for September 13th in Jacksonville. We're working hard, we're getting a lot done, we're being productive. In another sense, until you're in pads, it doesn't really feel like you're in training camp. The environment that's set from the top down and, and the environment in the locker room, it's a, it's a neat, uh, neat place. I know it's early on and I'm still uh, on a high from, from it being day two or three, but it's a, uh, it's a great working environment with a lot of, lot of great people and i um, excited to see what we can get done this year. Colts fans watching closely as well. Day first, RTV6 Sports. Dave, thank you. Scientists have made a big discovery about penguins in Antarctica just after the break. The exciting news for this threatened population. And it's been a couple of months since the protests began here in downtown Indianapolis. Many businesses boarded up their windows and it became a place where art and messages of support flourished. Coming up new at 5 o'clock, how one project is now using those pieces to capture this time in Indiana history. It's 451. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The time right now is 4.55, and this is a live look at traffic to our west on I-70 at State Road 267. And aside of ongoing construction, we do have State Road 267 northbound and southbound. The ramp's closed to get on eastbound I-70. That's a long-term project, so you're likely used to that. Just keep that in mind if that is part of your commute. But you can see down there on the interstate, everything is traveling up to speed, both eastbound and westbound. So here is some good news to start your day. Scientists just found 11 new colonies of emperor penguins in Antarctica. Some sp special satellite images reveal the colonies by showing scientists piles of guano. It's penguin poop. Experts now know of 61 emperor penguin colonies comprised of about half a million penguins. Since the penguins live and breed in such a remote area, researchers say the satellite images will allow them to monitor and study the populations. Very cool. Cool, Lisa. Yeah. One of my favorite movies is Happy Feet. Oh yeah, that's Tad always a, penguins. Oh my gosh, that's always a good mood movie. Yeah, that's uh, what it makes me think of. Yeah, you know what? This weather is going to put you in a good mood too. We yes. are going to see a very similar setup to what we saw yesterday. A bit of a cool start today. Temperatures in the 50s across central Indiana. Low humidity, so you'll feel that change when you step outside. You might want a light jacket this morning just to start your day. 79 degrees for the high. We're going to see a little bit more sunshine as we head into the afternoon compared to we saw a little bit more cloud coverage across the area yesterday, which will just help us warm up a bit quicker. And you can see as we head into Saturday, temperatures back to where they should be. And then that's also when we see more humidity in the forecast. Chances of storms return Sunday.